So before we design the longitudinal girders, the proportion of the live load shared by internal and external girders need to be established. So we have studied the carbon's theory of girder beam design in the previous class. So we have the equation, okay, to share the load for external girder and the internal girders. So these extra these are external girders on either side of the deck slab, and at the center you have the inner girder. Okay, the load given here is IRC class AA track vehicle. Okay, the load of that I need to distribute. to extend exterior girder and interior girder by some proportion using carbon's method okay so using carbon's method the reaction factor for the outer girder is 2 w1 by 3 1 plus ne x1 by summation of x square so w1 is the axial load keep it as it is 1 plus n n is the number of girders totally three girder beams we have here three and e is the eccentricity of load from the center girder that is 1.1 is highlighted here see here okay so this section transfers placement of wheels irc class a a vehicle okay you need to design it from the edge of the footpath to the edge of the wheel you need to maintain the clearance of class a a track vehicle that is 1.2 meters and from there you place two axles okay the center to center distance between two axles is 2.05 meters now x1 x1 is 3 meters that is the distance of exterior girder from the inner girder that is 3 divided by summation of x square summation of x square is total number of girders the summation of x square 2 into 3 square similarly the reaction factor for inner girder 2w1 1 plus 3 into 1.1 into 0 why 0 because it is exactly at the center of your deck slab right so you will not be having any eccentricity there so because of that we have taken it zero divided by 2 into 3 square so it gives the proportion of the load carried by exterior girder and the interior girder for exterior girder it is 0.52 w for interior girder it is 0.33 w so we will go for the design dead load bending moment and shear force calculation load coming from cantilever portions in the previous class we have calculated this load coming from the cantilever portions 2 into 15.66 it is here 2 into 15.66 see here the total load coming from the cantilever portion of the deck slab it is this cantilever portion 15.66 the same he has taken it here two into 15.66 loading from the deck that is the slab dead weight 6.56 by 6.3 so that also we have calculated in the previous class the self weight of the interior panel that is 6.56 6.56 dead load of the interior slab panel 6.56 okay the same thing he has taken there total load will be 72.65 kN on the girder beam this dead load is assumed to be taken equally by three girders all the three girders we divide the total load coming from the deck slab and the cantilever portion by three proportions 72.65 by 3 that we get it as 24.2 kN per meter now the self weight of the girder is calculated assuming the depth of the girder to be 100 mm per meter span so here the total length of the bridge is 14 meters so length of the girder length of the girder we assume 100 mm per meter that is 100 into 14 that is 1400 mm 1400 mm depth of rib <coughs> that is a rib which uh, which you get after deducting the slab depth so depth of the rib is 1400 minus 200 that is 1200 mm. so width of the rib we have already assumed 300 mm weight of the rib per meter length that is 3.3 into 1.2 into 24 
8.64 km per meter the weight of the cross girder also acts on the longitudinal girders in the form of a concentrated load so in the previous class i have explained you about how to take the longitudinal girder and how to take the cross girders so those cross girders weight i need to consider on the longitudinal girder weight of cross girder is 8.64 into 2.7 into 2 so you can check the figure of the previous class so those who are present in the previous class total udl on each girder is 33 km meter so see here the longitudinal girder section here drawn here that is total 14 meters okay and we have five cross girders at 3.5 meter center to center okay 14 meter length for longitudinal girder we have the udl of 33 km per meter and we have the cross girder at every 3.5 meters the weight of that cross girder is 15.55 km so maximum dead load bending moment now so he has calculated the bending moment for udl w l square by 8 and for the point loads totally <coughs> Three point loads we have fifteen point five five into three divided by two into seven minus fifteen point five five into three point five. From the center, he has considered it. So maximum dead load bending moment. Now dead load shear force W L by two plus fifteen point five five is say that is the center reaction and fifteen point five five by two on both the sides. So that is shear force. So this 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 is regarding dead load bending moment and dead load shear force. Now go for live load bending moment and shear force. So we have IRC class A track vehicle centrally placed on the girder. Centrally placed on the girder. So live load bending moment is see here. He has placed for out of 14 meter. He has placed the axle the vehicle which is of 3.6 meter length on the center of your longitudinal girder okay at the center so this is called as impact line diagram ild this is called as impact line diagram so for impact line diagram we have to consider the deflection of the girder beam at the center is equal to half of the central span half of the central span so out of 14 meter i have considered 7 meter on right side and 7 meter on left side half of 7 meter is 3.5 the 3.5 meter of deflection i have considered at the center now out of 3.6 1.8 remains on right side and 1.8 remains on left side so if i consider the deflection of 3.5 meter at the center now i need to go for the interpolation to calculate the deflection at 1.8 meters on either side okay so at 0 it is 0 at 7 meters it is 3.5 meter and at 1.8 meter what will be your deflection that i need to calculate by interpolation so if you do interpolation you will get 2.6 meters so using this he has calculated live load bending moment here so so this trapezoid here he is using on both the sides 3.5 plus 2.6 by 2 into 700 kN is total load of the uh, irc class a track vehicle into 1.8 meters from the center divided by 3.6 total length of the vehicle so that gives you total live load bending moment now bending moments including impact factor of 10% and reaction factor r for inner girder we have calculated the proportion that is 0.33w so 1.1 is impact factor 10% extra 1.1 0.33 into 2135 for outer girder 1.1 0.52 2135 into <laughs> that gives you 1 to 21.22 km meter so this is moments per exterior girder and inner girder now come for live load shear force so he has placed the vehicle okay maximum where the maximum shear force develops so maximum shear force will be developed in the girder when the live load is near the girder this load is to be placed between the support and exterior girder shear force will be found as a reaction developed by longitudinal girder so he has placed it so place the vehicle 
leaving 0.875 from the outer girder okay 350 kN of one axle and 350 kN of one more axle so reaction on outer girder is 350 into 2.125 divided by 3 and due to w it is 350 into 0.075 divided by 3 so we have got two reactions due to w and due to w1 and w2 on outer girder now on inner girder he has calculated the reaction here 443 kN so you need to place the axle something like this and reactions you need to calculate from inner girder and from exterior girder okay these reactions are taken as live loads on the girder as shown in the figure so since the shear force will be maximum here the support so from support leaving 1.8 meters i am placing my this shear force that is 443 kN so maximum shear force on the girder will be due to this 256 and 443 both the due to both the reactions i need to calculate the shear force here so i have got 245 kN and 424 kN so however maximum values of bending moment and shear force are considered for design so maximum live load bending moment is 1 to 2 and that is on exterior girder the same moment i will consider for all the three girders the maximum dead load bending moment is 917 total moment will be 2138 Now maximum live load shear force is 424. That is on the inner girder. The same shear force I will consider for all the three girders. So maximum dead load shear force is 254. I will get the total shear force as 79 kN. Now come for the design of that section. That is your longitudinal girder. Longitudinal girder. The beam is designed as a p beam with an effective cover of 100 mm so beam dimension is 300 mm by 1400 mm we have effective cover of 100 mm he has deducted okay and lever arm he has deducted now if he has calculated area of steel that is m by sigma st into d right so using this he has calculated ast number of bars say nine bars of 36 mm dia he has got it now we need to go for check for shear so we is equal to u by dd as you do in beam design same has calculated here right to provide three legged shear so this is regarding longitudinal girder design of longitudinal girder now we will go for design of cross girder design of cross girder design of the cross girder so cross sectional dimension of the cross girder are maintained same as longitudinal girder so longitudinal girder we have 300 mm by 1400 mm same dimensions we will maintain here so dead load bending moment and shear force for due to cross girder we will calculate it here okay 3 meter by 3.5 meter is the interior panel okay on all the four sides of the interior panel we have the girders so along 3.5 we have longitudinal girder here which has so okay and along 3 meter we have cross girder so span of the cross girder is 3 meter so dead load from slab which comes on the cross girder is 2 into 3 into 1.5 into 6.56. 6.56 is the interior panel dead load which we have calculated previously. Okay. So converting this to UDL divided by 3 meter total load divided by 3 meter will give you UDL on the cross girder. So total dead load 8.64 is self weight of the cross girder which we have calculated previously plus 9.83 that is UDL due to slab. Okay, as an approximation, the reaction on each cross girder is given by totally six number of cross girders we have. Okay, eighteen point five into six divided by three, so thirty seven kilometer. So three cross girders we have. Okay, so the dead load bending moment is computed 
by locating the live load bending moment where the live load moment is maximum the same as long is the girder i have drawn the cross section of this cross girder okay and to that section i have given the reactions due to cross girder and udl on the cross girder is 18.5 kN per meter so same as longitudinal girder he has placed the vehicle calculate the live load bending moment place the vehicle and calculate the live load bending moment so cross girder same live load bending moment dead load bending moment live load shear force and dead load shear force and design the section as b calculate ast okay so after designing so detail of stru sub structure you don't have for design of beam and slab you have t beam slab uh, t beam deck slab you have design of cantilever slab design of interior panel design of longitudinal girder and design of cross girders these four sections you need to design so out of four only one will be asked to you so either to design cantilever portion or either to design interior panel or to design longitudinal girder or to design cross girder only thing is you need to draw the section properly and you need to draw the plan properly right so after this design you need to go for detailing right so these are the girder beams where you have provided nine number of 36 dia bars okay and interior panel which you have designed and provided 10 mm dia bars at 200 mm center to center and this is your cantilever portion cantilever portion which you have designed so total four in t beam drag slab bridge we have four uh, components to be designed one is cantilever portion one is the cantilever portion and second one is the interior slab panel third one is longitudinal girder and the fourth one is cross girder four components you have for your design so for interior panel design you need to use fibers method which i explained in the previous class and for uh, longitudinal girder and cross girder you need to use carbons method and cantilever portion cantilever slab you have to design it by taking the moments and load of the cantilever slab which acts on the external girders here okay you need to design the cantilever slab and the load has to be considered on the external girder so this is your fourth module where you have t beam deck slab bridge designs of with four components that is interior panel cantilever slab longitudinal girder and cross girder so all the fours will not be asked to you in your exam so in they will be giving you problem and they will ask any one component to design either interior panel or longitudinal girder or cross girder or cantilever slab okay so only thing is you need to draw the plan and sections properly so how to place the how to place the axles on the deck slab okay so plan and sections you need to draw it properly okay so this finishes your fourth module so in the next class we will go for piers and abutment last module and we will finish up so for your third ia you have uh, yeah, i will giving you four problems so one will be on each module second module slab bridge design box culvert pipe culvert and t beam building totally four problems will be there out of that you need to solve any two okay okay thank you